So what you see in front of you is my old CNC machine, which I was using about five years ago. I've since sold it, moved on to a few other projects. A few little montage here, maybe a few arcade machines. Okay, probably more than a few arcade machines, but here we are to today. So fast forward to today, I wanted a bigger CNC machine, something I could use to cut naturally bigger stuff, as well as even doing little stuff as we uh, as we go along. So I found this site uh, quite a while ago and uh, really liked the low rider, and especially liked the design by a uh, Michael Cunningham. And he uh, wanted a really nice little system that was uh, portable, easily expandable, uh, and folds away when not in use. Because, like I say, I go through many projects, so I wanted something that uh, nothing should be overly heavy, uh, should be fairly easy to assemble, and fairly straightforward. Uh, it should try an auto square, which was really nice. It means it's uh, when you put it back together, no matter what you do, it's square, and it's expandable, and uh, yeah, doesn't take up much space when I'm not using it. And uh, here you can see his design, and I decided to uh, start the works into Fusion 360. So here we are. I just open it up, and uh, I'm not going to detail every step, but just kind of walk through, you know putting this thing together. So those are the end brackets uh, made with uh, three quarter inch plywood laminated with holes cut through the middle and then the end uh, basically the roller sections or the, the the part where the wheels ride along and it was kind of a box beam with a small shelf and then internally I started framing together the removable bed and I wanted it in two pieces again just to make everything easy to uh, fold down and, and put away when I wasn't using it. The final design didn't really look like this. I shifted a bit so I could get better use of the bed just depending on where the spindle uh, laid up. And uh, we'll show a quick shot underneath here just to show how everything kind of sits together. The real kind of I don't want to call it the magic, but the real thing on these was they had these, he came up with these great uh, panel clips. And I'll zoom in on one of these right now. And what that does is it's a really low profile clip that sits together and, uh, you know, doesn't take up much lateral space, but it gives a really nice positive lock between the frame and the bed. So once you get a bunch of those set in, uh, your bed can just drop right in. I mean, there's always a little bit of wiggling, but can drop right in and you got a nice solid work surface to go with. All right, before we head to the garage, just a small intermission just to explain what I'm doing next. I wanted to show the whole thing going together kind of in real time just so you could really get a sense of how long individual pieces take to uh, assemble. So on to that. Alright, so this is the part where I chronicle how I put this whole thing together. Uh, basically, this is one of the end pieces. I'm not going to go through all the steps on cutting and whatnot. I'm sure everybody's seen how to cut wood on a table saw. So, I guess uh, stand by. So I put marks on the end piece as well as the sawhorse just so I could get them lined up a little quicker. And it's basically just to make sure everything's kind of evenly balanced. A couple standard U-bolts just to hold everything down. I found that just finger tightening's uh, good enough.
the next step is the self-leveling because as the table got bigger I found that the bed sagged quite a bit and again it's a standard saw cut lumber two by threes actually and then I put some threaded inserts with a quarter 20 bolts and that's basically kind of like a bed leveling that you'd see on a, uh, a 3d printer and then I uh, numbered each one so that when I put it all back together I can put it in a little quicker Now the next piece, so it's basically a basically a box beam, and you can see it's just a three-quarter inch plywood doubled up on either end with some center braces just to keep everything nice and stiff. I originally had just a plain flat rail, but what I was finding is when you got into some heavier wood, it would torque a little bit. So I found, and not my idea, I just went online and somebody else came up with it, was that if you basically cut a V groove in it, keeps the, the uh, wheels in line and then uh, you don't get the same twisting action. These guys are kind of like the magic in the sauce. Um, they're nice stiff brackets that will hold up the bed and they also help to kind of self square everything. So there's two of those uh, for each panel. And this just slots in. Before I get too far, you can also see that's the uh, belt attachments. Um, this again, this all this stuff is somebody else came up with it, and I just kind of modified it a little bit for my situation. And then uh, some kind of homebrew 3D printed end stops, just so I had a basically a positive stop at the Y end on both sides, so that I can do dual end stops. So I had to backtrack a little bit. I forgot the gantry will not go on with everything installed. So you take the panels out, move this in a few inches, and then put the gantry on.
attach the belt. Install the gantry. This gives you a little kind of a close-up on the self-leveling. Well, I guess there's no self to it. It's me leveling. So I basically wanted it at kind of the midpoint, so where it kind of has a tendency to sag naturally. I can pull the uh, threads up, and that will help take the bow out of the wood. And then, in theory. Give us a nice flat working surface all the way across. And now for the most embarrassing part of this whole build was my wiring. It was all together and then I pulled it all apart so that I could make this. Basically it's an independent control pendant so I can kind of take that with me and it basically just lives right here on the end and then as I fire it up, it's using a Marlin interface and all of this stuff, every single bit of it, uh, you can get on the V1 engineering website and fantastic resource for people who want to just build something themselves and great support. So I'll touch. So right now it's a dual Z homing. So one side will pop up, then the other. All right, and then we'll do a XY home. So now we're X0, Y0, and Z117. Z is just a number. It depends which uh, tool bit. Basically, once I get a piece in there, I bring the tool bit down, zero everything out, and then start cutting. So now I'll take a little bit more close up on the gantry ends themselves. All right, so this is the business end. So we've got the pin spindle power supply. This is a standard 500 watt, really noisy spindle. I think from AliExpress maybe is where I got it. Um, I did have this whole thing running with uh, gerbil, gerbil, however you say that. And I found it was just too noisy. It was always throwing errors. I was always getting uh, end stop problems because it was just loud. But with the Marlin, it doesn't seem to have that issue. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, I've got emergency stop. It basically, it basically functions as my power button. Uh, spindle control down over here that controls the speed. To be honest, I haven't ever cranked it less than maximum speed because this 500 watt spindle isn't all that uh, robust. And then the 24 volt power supply, 24 volt is right back in here and behind. So we'll do a close up on the end stops. It's just a uh, homemade 3D print. 
bracket and then the bracket themselves I'll detail how I made those again it's all all the templates and everything are on v1 website so I didn't reinvent the wheel here and I made a custom bracket to mount the cable chain holder just to keep everything stiff and then a few pieces of tape along the way just to uh, tie everything down the wheels are standard 76 millimeter wheels I couldn't actually find any 60 millimeter wheels which is what they call for on the site um, I had tons of roller blades laying around you can get those at uh, any kind of uh, dollar store or I guess not dollar store value village kind of thing so I had to make some adjustments on the back side of the wheel put a little brass shim in there just to kind of keep everything stiff and this is kind of the uh, the cleaner other end plate standard NEMA 17 motors more than adequate I've never cut aluminum everybody wants to ask can you cut aluminum I don't know I've only ever cut wood and then wiring management again is not my uh, not my specialty